Welcome to TCU football with head football coach Jim Wacker. Today's show is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas. Coca-Cola Classic. Can't beat the feeling. Radio Shack, the technology store, America's leader in consumer electronics. Blackman Mooring Stomatic, carpet, furniture, drapery, and air duct cleaning. Delta Airlines, Delta, we love to fly and it shows. Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of Texas, Dr. Pepper and TCU, just what the doctor ordered. Jack Williams Auto Mall, Highway 80 at Loop 820 and West Fort Worth. Ashworth Insurance, for your peace of mind, we're always there. TCU would also like to thank the following sponsors for their support. Max Eubank Roofing, Bruce Alford, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, and Southwest Land Title. The second and three at the 21, Shipley to the near side of the field, Holmes the far side, double tight ends in the game, Thompson and Blackwell, and now Motkin shifts into a slot left. Giles with a long count. Max Blitz coming, they throw it downfield for Shipley, it's a jump ball, and it's a touchdown for Stephen Shipley, who out jumps Stanley Richard two yards deep, and the Horn Frogs score the touchdown. One set back, Palmer, now he shifts into a slot right, and Giles to throw, Blitz coming, screen pass, Palmer at the 20, down to the 15, to the 10, down to the 5, he may score, and he does! Touchdown, Tommy Palmer on the screen pass from 20 yards out, and TCU has taken the lead. If only a football game were only 45 minutes, hey, I'd be the happiest guy in the whole world. So would all those other Horned Frog coaches and players and fans. We had a great, great third quarter. But the shame of it is, it goes for 60 minutes. And the guy that had the final word on this game happened to be Bill Cook. And that is the final second of the 1989 season. A gala try by TCU. They had a 17-10 lead at the end of the third quarter, but the fourth quarter belongs to the University of Texas, and the streak has now reached 22 in a row. The final score, Texas 31, TCU 17. Actually, when you look back at the ball game, I really believe some of the critical mistakes we made in the first half, uh, we, along with the officials, maybe a couple of them, uh, made a big, big difference. We had a couple chances for big turnovers. One, an interception, we could have gone for a touchdown, for a score. We needed that kind of a lift. But hey, the good news is, we knew, after Ron Giles in particular scrambled all the way down there to about the five-yard line right before the end of the half, we knew we could play with Texas. And we had those kids, I mean, they were cranked up, they were excited, they believed at halftime in the whole third quarter we were gonna beat the University of Texas for the first time in 22 yard years. We got a great effort out of it. And man, did we have a great comeback. Was that ever fun to see? The kids played hard, and that's all you ask. In the fourth quarter, did Texas wear it down? Yeah. Did they play better than us in the fourth quarter? Yes, they hit a couple big plays, and that made the big difference. It wasn't like half. There are a lot of young horn frogs that are coming back. We're going to have a fine football team. They're going to be fun, fun to watch. Big interception. We had a fumble that we should have gotten that, we, that was not given to us on an official's call. And, uh, you know, we had Giles. He scrambles and takes down about the five, you know, and we run out of time. Uh, we had some chances there, I think, to, uh, to put, make it more even going into halftime. I think that would have helped us. But, but again, that's ifs and buts uh, will drive you nuts. And uh, that was through the day. This is the only the, what, fourth play for TCU in this football game? Fifth play. Fifth play of the football game. And Ron Giles from his own 26. Short drop, dumps it downfield. Blackwell caught. First down out to the 39-yard line. Gain of 12. Mike Sullivan comes over to give him a head slap. But that little short drop and pop has worked well all year long to Kelly Blackwell. Giles sends two receivers to the short side of the field, which is the far side. And Giles to throw. Screen pass. Caught by Dickens. At the 35, 40, out to the 45, 47-yard line. Very close to a first down. It has been a big problem for TCU the last two weeks. Second and 10 from their 13. Giles to throw. The pocket collapses again, and Giles to run. 15, 20, 25, 30. First down and more for Ron Giles. All the way out to the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. A gain of 19 yards. Mark Berry finally brings down Ron Giles. Giles behind center Mike Bulla. Long count here. Hands off at left tackle to Palmer. Now swings it outside to the 35. 10-yard gain. Out past the 40. Dragged down. Collared out there by Lance Gunn. Bulla will have knee surgery. 
middle of next week has been playing on bad legs all year second down and 12 Giles quick drop over the middle Blackwell caught at midfield and drags three Longhorns near another first down at the 49 yard line first down TCU from their 24 yard line draw play to Palmer out past the 30 and brought down at the 34 yard line very close to a first down Jackson in motion left to line up alongside Dickens. They hand off to Palmer, first down and more. 35, 40, 43 yard line. Collard out there near the 45 by Shane Dronett again. More than enough for a first down though. And again, the pushing and shoving continues and Texas thinks there was a fumble on the play. Let's look down there and see. 24 seconds left in the first half. It's third down and short. Draw play to Motkins, first down at the 40, out to the 45 yard line, 19 seconds left. Ron Giles has two receivers right and two left and one setback. Texas showing us a blitz and they come with it. But Motkins picks it up and now Giles is in trouble. Giles still on his feet at the 40 and now he runs with it down to the 20, to the 15, the 10, the 5. And as the time expires in the first half, Ron Giles is tackled at the three yard line. Ron, you got to get out of bounds. Two receivers split to the near side of the field. One set back, Palmer on third and six from the 36-yard line. They rush four. Giles scrambles, now flips it out near sideline and has Michael Jackson for a first down at the 45-yard line. He got the foot down, and in front of the Texas bench, Michael Jackson comes up with his sixth catch of the afternoon. Holmes splits wide to the left side, Shipley wide right, near side to short side. Blitz coming, Giles beats it with a pass to Blackwell over the middle for nine yards, and now he pushes forward and may have the first down. Third down and short near the 40-yard line. Four men up for the Longhorns. Jones comes on the blitz. Palmer has the first down at the 45, out to midfield. Gain of 10 for Tommy Palmer. Shipley split right. Palmer the lone set back, second and 10 from midfield. Giles play action fake again. Freezes the defense and completes it to Blackwell. 14-yard gain to the 36 as Blackwell is tagged by Grady Kavnis. Yeah, the third quarter was a great quarter for the Frogs. Uh, I think part of it uh, uh, was the fact that, you know, we had a great halftime. The kids went out. We knew we were in the ball game. We knew we were playing smash mouth football, and we were matching up with them. And we had a chance to win the football game. And I think we had an emotional edge going into the third quarter. And I think that was the difference. And we were opening the holes, and we were running, and we were making the plays, uh, and, uh, and took it to them. We won the third quarter. Longhorn showing blitz. They have Lance Gunn up, and here he comes from the outside. Giles in trouble. Scrambles. Gets a block for Morris going right to the 20. Still on his feet. 25, 30, and out of bounds. First down for Ron Giles. Now, that's the Ron Giles you like to see. From their own 31-yard line on first down, the handoff to Palmer. Breaks through a gap. On his feet at the 40, 45, going out to midfield into Texas territory and run out of bounds around the 45-yard line by Anthony Curl. Second and 10 from the 45, play action fake. Giles rifles to the near sideline, caught by Michael Jackson, gain of five, tackled immediately by Grady Kavnis at the 40-yard lines. 10-13 to go in the third quarter. J.R. Graham to snap it to Mike Nowak. Long count here, he does. Nowak puts it down, Cordman puts it up, and this one is good from 36 yards out, and TCU is on the scoreboard. Second and 11 from their 47-yard line. TCU trying to get back in it. Giles to throw. Hit, but completes it. Far sideline for Jackson into Texas territory at the 45-yard line. First and 10 at the 39. Chris Thompson out of Vernon is checked in. Two tight ends and a handoff that way to Palmer. 10 more, 11 more as he pops it down to the 30-yard line. Inside the 30 to the 28. 11-yard gain short side of the field is the far side hand off to Motkins running that way to the 25 run out of bounds at the 22 yard line gain of about six more Mark Berry bumped him out second and three at the 21 Shipley to the near side of the field Holmes the far side double tight ends in the game Thompson and Blackwell and now Motkins shifts into a slot left Giles with a long count Max Blitz coming they throw it down field for Shipley it's a jump ball and it's a touchdown for Steven Shipley who out jumps Stanley Richard two yards deep and the Horn Frogs score the touchdown. Near the uh, left hash mark with one set back, two receivers are split right and now Palmer shifting into a slot right. 
Double tight end, Giles to throw, blitz coming. He beats it, Shipley caught. First down at the 40, at the 35, 30, 25, down to the 22-yard line, and a first down for the Horn Frog. One set back, Palmer, now he shifts into a slot right. And Giles to throw, blitz coming, screen pass, Palmer at the 20, down to the 15, to the 10, down to the 5, he may score, and he does! Touchdown, Tommy Palmer on the screen pass from 20 yards out, and TCU has taken the lead. The uh, played hard, I think they played pretty good. Uh, they gave us a great effort, we wore down at the end, uh, they broke a couple big plays, and that was basically the ball game. That was the difference. Uh, if we could have stopped them there, not gotten the taunting penalty, uh, you know, man alive, we're in the ball game yet, we have a chance to take it on down, score, go for two, win the football game. First and ten from the TCU 39-yard line. Play action fake, now they fake the reverse, and now Gardair is buried. Back at the 45-yard line by Fred Washington. Far hash mark moving left to right. Hand off. Adrian Walker hit in the backfield by McWright. Check that cobble. Cardera may be audibling as he yells right, now left, and shifts the formation. And he wants to throw. No pressure. Lofts it downfield for Walker. Overthrows him one yard deep in the end zone. Good coverage down there by Robert McWright. 12-01 to go in the first quarter. Now it's third and 16 at the 31. Outside rush, blitzing linebacker Brad Smith coming and throws guard there for a big loss back at the 46-yard line. Texas has great field position now at the 41-yard line. First down at 10, Jones in motion. Here's Walker again, but he's hit in the backfield. Horns threatening at the 17-yard line. Hand off to Bubba Walker, the fullback, and he is blasted at the line of scrimmage down there by Washington. And Daryl Davis gained a maybe one yard, but they made a Bubba Walker sandwich that time. The net was 29, and, Tisa, and uh, Texas has it at their own 20-yard line. Gardair fakes to Walker and lofts it downfield. Tony Jones open, but McWright caught up with him and makes the interception at the 35-yard line. Gardair underthrew it, and that gave McWright time to regain momentum and get his fifth interception of the year. Some umbrellas up. Temperature in the low 50s. First and 10. University of Texas at the 37. They hand it to Walker, and Walker has big problems on his hands as he tries to tippy-toe his way past the left side of that TCU defense. Nothing there for him. Second down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Three, four receivers split right. Blitz coming. Guard there popped by Booker back at the 45 as he delivered the ball short for Chris Samuels. Third and 10, Cunningham lined up against Roosevelt College. That's a good battle. Third down in a bunch. Guard air to throw. Sets himself at the 45, and Crump stepped in front of the receiver, Simmelman, at the 35-yard line and almost had the pick. If he had caught that football, nothing but about 60 yards of white stripes and green turf in front of him. The Horns have the ball at their own 49, second and eight, guard air to throw. Guard air under pressure. Pocket collapses, and Fred Washington and one of his buddies are down there to make the tackle. 10-3 the score here. Texas with the ball in the lead, but it's third and 10 from the 20. And Cobble hits Gardair again as he throws, and the ball falls incomplete at the 40-yard line. First and 10 at the 25. He's the third quarterback of the afternoon. Forbes has a great arm. He pitches to Walker. Walker hit and buried by Fred Washington. A great one-on-one. -on -one. I'll take you to the turf tackle by Fred Washington for no gain at the 25. It's a tie game at 10, and they send two receivers right. Far hash mark. The football lined up, moving left to right, and Forbes calls him set. Blitz coming again. Greg Moore picked up. Forbes will scramble. Moore chasing. Forbes finally tackled after a gain of one at the 44-yard line by Buddy Wyatt, who tripped him up there. Pat McFarland snaps it to Forbes. Blitz coming again. Booker hits Donovan Forbes. He hits hit by Wyatt. Fumbles the ball, but they say he was down. Or do they? We still don't have an indication. Now we do at midfield. TCU recovers the football. And great speed. I don't think we've ever had a sophomore play as good as Roosevelt Collins played in 1989. Second and 10 from the 12-yard line. One setback, Lovell, three-step drop, in trouble. Now still in trouble, and finally sacked by Rosie Collins at the five-yard line. Well, I think it's been a very slow, painful process as you ask Coach Armstrong. You know, uh, basically, the Coach Armstrong, everything got to be perfect. Rosie, particularly for a sophomore, I think is really a mature kid. He, uh, you know, he loves the game, and he's very coachable, and he's a real intense football player, and, uh, you know, just does a heck of a job. He doesn't let things shake him up a whole bunch, and if he makes a mistake, he just comes back and tries to correct it. 
and uh, you know has has a real good temperament for football play. I had the quickness last year, but I didn't know how to utilize it. This year, being able to control your quickness and come off the ball at the right time it makes a big a lot of difference compared to last year, whereas I was young and didn't really know. Football means a lot to Rosie, and uh, he plays hard all the time, and he has a lot of fun playing. You know, practice isn't a chore for him. Uh, he enjoys practice. He enjoys playing the game. And, you know, having the great ability helps him a bunch, too. I mean, he's a he's an ex excellent athlete. He runs to the ball real well, and he's a big, tall, rangy kid that's strong. A lot of people are surprised. Uh, you know, he's about 6'5", 235, and, you know, we've been trying to put a little more weight on him, but he's really strong. He benches about 375 and plays with great leverage. So, uh, you know, the, the athletic ability coupled with, with his attitude and his, his uh, work ethic, I think, uh, combined to make a heck of a football player. Discipline, mostly for my parents growing up, you know, they really stressed classwork. Especially my dad played football a whole bunch of self. But he always got his books and that what he always wanted me to do. And me being a communication graphics major, it's kind of different because I leave the art building and everything is kind of laid back and quiet and I come over here, you know, and get screamed at all day. It's kind of like switching gears pretty fast. <laughs> you got to be pretty disciplined to take it, you know. <laughs> I can't think of a ball game that he played bad. Uh, you know, he's played anywhere from very, very good and steady to, to outstanding. And I think particularly the last three or four weeks, he's come on. Makes me feel best when I beat the man in front of me and the quarterback is like the afterthoughts, you know, it's like the icing on the cake. But once you beat that man in front of you, it's a hell of a lot better. When I look at the defensive ends that have come through here and that have played ex exceptionally well for us, the Spradlins and the Simeons, who were both all-conference players for us, Caldwell, Dean, Robert Lyles, who's, who's playing right now for the Oilers and, and playing very well, I don't think any of them in fact, I'm sure none of them played uh, as well as Rosie is and as consistently as Rosie is right now as a sophomore. So from that standpoint, it's very encouraging. You know, I think he's a little bit ahead of schedule. Near the left hash mark, Gill under pressure, now scrambles out and now tackled by Roosevelt Collins, who put that big number 48 across the back of Jamie Gill's number nine and took him to the turf. 1989. In a lot of ways, it was a very good year, as Frank Sinatra would say. It really was. Because our players gave us a great effort from day one right up through the end of the season. They practiced hard. They played hard. They had a great attitude. They were fun to coach, and I'm proud of them. Hey, there were 13 seniors out there, guys like Fred Washington, Buddy Wyatt, Tommy Palmer, you go right on down, Mike Bulla, so many of those guys. Are we going to miss them? Sure. But they laid a foundation, and I believe that. The good news is we've got most of those kids back. It's a young, young football team with a lot of exciting players. You know, you take Curtis Motkins and Steve Shipley and Stu Dickens, go right on through. Uh, Mike Nowak, boy, sophomore, Kelly Blackwell. A lot of our best football players happen to be youngsters, freshmen and sophomores, and they're going to grow up. And we're going to go recruit some linemen because that's the key. And all of our offensive linemen, but Bullock, the starters, are back next year. That's a plus. We find a couple defensive linemen, a couple really good offensive linemen that can come in and help us and look out. We are looking forward to the 90s. But this Horned Frog football team is going to be better, better, better. That's a promise. You put it to back. I couldn't pay fancy things I've never had. No fur line coat. I'm months behind my bank knows. No. Nope. 